Hi there, do you wanna learn a few tricks about the Blender's graph editor? Well, this is a video for you. So I'll be covering everything about the graph editor in this video, but if you like it, please uh, let us know and we'll do it another one because I've got more to say about the graph editor. But in this one, I'll be covering a few of the essential hotkeys that you need to know, uh, mainly about uh, inserting keyframes, selecting keyframes, and controlling the viewport visibility of stuff that you wanna see in the graph editor. Enough talking, let's go. Here's a really handy tip. You can switch between the dope sheet and the uh, graph editor really easy with control tab. This is new in 2.8. It used to be part of an add-on, but now it's included in the default behavior. So a lot of people still don't know this one. So control tab rather than shift F6. Control tab versus shift F6. Ah, I broke my wrist. Now, there's a bunch of different ways for selecting keys and some of them are more useful in certain circumstances than others. So I'm just gonna go through a few now and maybe you know some of them, maybe you don't. All right, so first of all, column select. This is really handy for selecting all the keys in a column. I can just select any keys here and then hit K and that's going to select all the ones that are in line. That's very, very handy. Did you know you can lasso select by control and then left clicking to drag a lasso select around certain stuff. That's really handy as well. Link select, super handy. If I wanna select all my keys on a channel, I can just select one key. Or let's just say I wanna select these two um, channels and then hit L, L for link. And now all of those channels, all those keys on those channels are selected. Awesome, now I can move them around and go, whoa, look at me move. This is how I spend my day. Now there's a couple different ways to select everything uh, for before and after the playhead, which is super handy to do. Uh, if you push the square brackets left and right, it's gonna select in that uh, order. So uh, if I push square bracket left, it's gonna select everything to the left. And if I push square bracket right, it's gonna select everything to the right of the playhead. Now there's an alternate way of doing that, based on where your hand is on the, the keyboard. So if you don't wanna actually you know, move your hand like that, you can actually hold down Control Shift, and then with your mouse on either side of the playhead, you can just click. Now I'm right click select, so I'll right click and select that side. Or if I wanna select this side, I'll right click on that side. But for you, in the default settings, it will be left click. Don't forget, it works on where the playhead is. Super handy. Yeah, it's more buttons to push, but your hand's already there on the keyboard, so it's easier than playing flip flops. You can grow or shrink your selection with Control and Numpad Plus, and minus will, will shrink it. So there we go, plus, minus. Super handy if you wanna work on a little section. And of course, there is invert selection. So sometimes if you wanna select some keys, it's, it's sometimes easy just to select the ones that you, that you don't want, and then invert it with Control I. Now I've selected all the other ones, and I can scale them to zero. Whoa, because that's something that you wanna do. You can actually control click to insert a keyframe in the graph editor on the active channel. What's an active channel? It's the last one that you have selected. So if you have three uh, selected, whatever one you selected last is the active channel. Then inside my graph editor, wherever my mouse is, if I hit control and click, I've inserted a keyframe. So I can go bang, 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 bang. It's a really quick way of inserting keyframes there to do a really dodgy bouncing cube. That should be a ball. Why is that not a bouncing ball? Let me just fix that real quick. Whew, much better. Right, bear in mind, when you add it this way though, it doesn't respect the snapping. So when you, uh, by default, it will snap to the nearest frame, which is excellent when you're animating. Uh, not so much when you're doing drivers though, so make sure you turn it off to no auto snap when you're doing drivers. Although uh, it should be on uh, nearest frame, which is good. Now, if you wanted to fix these ones, there's two ways of doing that. You can actually hit Shift S and bring up to snap to the nearest frame. You saw, saw them shift there, or I'll just undo that. Um, or you can hit G, zero, and then enter, and then it will respect the snapping. It was gonna snap in that way. So whichever way is easier, uh, it depends on preference. Now it would be nice if you um, entered keyframes like this and it did respect the snapping, but you know what you shouldn't do? You shouldn't do a feature request in a YouTube video, because that'd be stupid. All right, so you want to insert keyframes on certain channels. Sometimes it's easier to bring up the, uh, the sliders, so show sliders, and then actually I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And this shows you value for those, for those channels. And if you hit I over the top of this, it's actually gonna key all of those related channels. So they were all the rotation ones. If I hit I here, it's gonna um, insert on the scale. And here it's gonna insert on all keys on all of the locations. So sometimes that might be easier or a quicker way than hitting I and then only selected channels. And like, yeah, this menu is a little bit difficult to deal with. So maybe that other way is faster. Another way that might be faster is to hide everything uh, that you're not wanting to set a keyframe on. So I've got one key selected there, let's hit Shift H to hide everything else. And now when I hit the insert channel, um, I can choose actually all channels. 
and it won't key anything that isn't visible. So sometimes that's easier, just hit I, bang, I, bang, you know, wherever you want, you want it to key. That's just one way of speeding up that menu a little bit. Maybe it'll help you out, maybe it won't. If you have an open up a file and all these colors here are looking back at you, they're giving you color blindness. I'm pretty sure that's how color blindness works. You can clean that up by going for, uh, view and then show color groups. And now it's back to the default colors, which in my opinion are much easier to read than all this craziness. What is that? White on yellow? Are you, what? Make sure you know how to control your visibility. So up here, these three buttons, they are your visibility. So if you want to show uh, all the bones, that even the ones that you don't have selected, make sure you have this one turned off and that's going to show all the bones in your rig. If you only want to work with the ones that you have selected, so I'll just jump into pose mode, you can see, okay, I've only got the torso selected there. Just click that one and that is going to show uh, just what you have selected. If you have any hidden bones, click that one and that uh, is going to show you all the bones that uh, are a part of the rig. They may have keyframes on them, but they're not visible. And this one here, you don't need to worry about that one unless you've got broken channels, but they usually show up in red anyway. All right, you can hide all your channels or all the channels in a group by clicking this eyeball up here. Uh, make sure you click the little eyeball because it's very sensitive. If you click on that bit, it's gonna say, do you wanna rename it? No, I don't wanna rename it. And don't forget, you can also uh, click and drag down here if you wanna change the visibility on most of the things uh, or any of any things, it's gonna toggle. Um, yeah, it's gonna toggle. Make sure that you, you can hide them with the H key and that's gonna um, shortcut there. So if I wanted to, let's just box select these ones and hide them with H. It's another way of hiding them. You can do the same thing in here. If I, let's uh, zoom in here. If I have a couple of keyframes selected from a few channels and then hit H, it's gonna hide those channels where the keyframes are selected. If you have a lot of things showing and you only wanna work on one particular curve, just make sure that you select it uh, and then hit Shift H and that's gonna hide everything except what you have selected. And that's a really quick way to just to clean up your viewport, show you what you wanna see. To unhide everything, just put push Alt H. Don't forget about the filtering up here. Uh, you can type in whatever you want and it's gonna filter out those channels. So if you wanted to work on only the selected objects that you have, but only on the Z location, just type in Z lock up there and it's gonna filter all those ones there. And of course, remember I have the only show what I have selected here. So it's gonna filter all those um, Z location channels and then maybe I needed to move them all up or something, do something crazy. Wow, I'm so good at animation. If you wanted to expand or contract all these groups, you just hit the numpad plus uh, and it's gonna uh, un unfold all those channels for you. Uh, although if you push the numpad minus, it goes super duper far and it can collapses absolutely everything. So really numpad minus is pointless. Uh, numpad plus, it's pretty good. See how it steps there? Whereas numpad minus, ah, there is no stepping. Naughty. So that's all for this video. If you want to see more, please let us know and I'll make another one of these. As always, you can head on over to CG Cookie and learn more about animation and all things Blender. Uh, but for now, cool, thanks for watching, cheers. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.